All right, everybody, we're back, we're here, and we have the Eon 612. Total, it's 18 kilograms shipped in the box. It's less than 30 pounds. Like it, this is a seriously light top speaker. What's new about the new generation of Eons? So let's let's get to it. And we got a box in a box. Oh, that was my toe. Oh my god, that was my big toe. It's got Bluetooth control. It actually has a full wireless interface that you can use an app with which is really, really handy. It kind of makes it so if you don't have a soundboard or any kind of graphic equalizer or DSP correction or anything like that, you are able to do some more fine adjustments through it through an app. Also, we got about 1200 watts, a very special kind of design with the woofer here that I'm just noticing. It's... Here we got an unbox. <laughs> it's an unbox like list on how to properly unbox the JBL. That's actually pretty neat. Oh, look at that. It does come out real nice. Actually, it looks like a pretty lengthy power cable. Let's see how long we got here. Not bad, actually. That's about 10 foot cable. Let's actually get this off. Got it upside down. Ooh, one thing I noticed right away, a lot of companies don't do this, and I wish they would. They actually have a wing nut here to lock in your pull piece. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had people during gigs or whatever come by and like just brush against your speaker they're like they're almost sitting like almost like on a bearing surface because it's so smooth and flat in the top of these that the speaker just spins on the stand and now you gotta go from behind your booth and fix it it's annoying very very light for what it is i mean you got a 12 in here you got a compression horn all right so without further ado we're actually gonna start taking this guy apart all right so we got all the grill holes out or grill holes grill screws out and now we're gonna take a look in here and there it is there's the uh, the very revolutionary waveguide. We have ports here and here, and I can already feel acousta mass or stuffing or you know what polyfill, whatever the hell you want to call it. But there is some in here, so that's good. Let's try and take off this waveguide. <laughs> All right, so now we got the cone off. It's kind of cheap ABS plastic. It's a little disappointing, but. I'm sure there's a good reason for it, I'm sure. And we're gonna hear it and we're gonna, gonna see just how much of a difference or impact it makes. So here we actually got the woofer. Ooh, that's really stiff. Actually feels like a nice premium quality woofer, so we'll see. Oh, here's another thing we haven't seen since the QSCs. We got a gasket. We actually have a gasket around the woofer. JBL is not disappointing with quality. As for the woofer, yeah, it's nothing crazy, but it looks nice. I mean, we actually have a flat spider. So one thing, if you notice, a lot of spiders have a ridge on them. When they're flat like that, it gives them a little bit better, I guess, smoothness to them or linearity. Other than that, looks like we got a, a pulp pressed treated paper cone. It looks like about maybe a two and a quarter maybe two and a half inch voice coil. It's a little hard to tell with this one. Um, no motor venting, no basket venting. So here's the actual woofer, fully out. Chaz took the spades off, because as everyone knows, I hate them. So we actually have a model number on the back here. So this is actually a speaker made by JBL. Um, it's an eight ohm driver, again, out of Northridge, California. It's made in Mexico. No surprise, a lot of things. A lot of things are made in Mexico now. Um, this is the 612H driver, so if you ever needed to replace this thing, it is actually really easy to call up JBL and order in a place. They even actually have a stamp here and an inspection stamp as well. It just goes to show JBL going above and beyond with their quality control and everything. So, again, thank you JBL for actually paying attention. It essentially only is affecting this outer part here because if you look, this is nearly flush with where that lip of these two different paper... Um, materials actually meet. So that's maybe where they're getting it because this is slightly different. Maybe it's dampened a bit. I don't know, I'm just kind of taking guesses here. They put clips on their acoustophil or polyfill, whatever. They put clips on this stuff to keep it inside the driver so that it's not gonna move around, it's not gonna shift about while you're moving these things. Again, amazing attention to detail here. It, 
JBL going above and beyond. And looks like we got a sealed back amplifier, which again is good. We got the horn out. Here it is. This <laughs> it's so tiny. It's like the smallest little thing I think we've ever seen in our life. This is like, I, I don't even know. Like, it's obviously a neodymium compression horn. All right, there it is. That's actually really nice. That is a, a quality neodymium magnet right there. We have a polished surface. We have foam for the membrane. You actually have a nice looking little voice coil on this dome. So we have all the bolts off the back of the amp. Um, just to kind of show you that I suck at my job. <laughs> wow, that's got some, that's got some caps. Okay, so we have actually the main caps back here. They're 200 volt, 4,700 microfarad. Uh, it looks like there's about four of them, so that's pretty nice. And then we actually have our output um, filters here as well, which are, it looks like a thousand microfarad at 50 volts. And then we also have more caps. Oh my God, there are a lot of capacitors on this board. Again, kind of shows where JBL gets their, uh, it's all their power from. We got actual chokes here, which is nice to see. So these are physical chokes. Um, they actually have those on the speakers. The reason why chokes are used are to just cut down on any kind of um, interference or noise, um, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the actual hookup for the Bluetooth. Look at that. <laughs> so if you wanted to, for whatever reason, you could put one of those Bluetooth antennas on the back of here as opposed to how they have it done. But it's not really needed. Um, but yeah, honestly, wow. I'm really impressed. This looks like really nice um, electrical work that they did on this board and everything. Everything looks really neatly done. All right, so we have this all back together. We have it hooked up. We just gave it an initial sound test ourselves. And one thing that Chaz and I do have to admit it is very clear, it does sound fantastic, but it really has no low end. It rolls off really hard, I'd probably say at 60 hertz. Anything below 60 hertz, you are just not getting out of this thing. We're not even gonna throw a sine wave through it because we can just hear that it's not gonna do it. We tried even messing with the EQs. It's really a top speaker only. You really can't even use these alone. If you were, I'd only suggest rock music. It's really punchy and kicky, but when it comes to the actual lows or those long bass notes, it, it doesn't do well. But everything else about it is fantastic. We're gonna give it a little sound meter test, see how loud we can get this thing pumping within this room, and kind of go from there and let you guys hear it too. So hopefully your eardrums don't bleed. We'll try and make it so it doesn't. <laughs> So now you just heard a little bit of it. That was about half volume. We were getting peaks of 105 decibels and it's very loud. It's very loud and it's very clear. Now we're gonna push it to 11. We are literally gonna send this thing to clipping and just see just how loud and hopefully not sh you know, shrill this is gonna sound. So uh, without further ado, let's just, let's suffer a little more. <laughs> So yeah, as you can tell, it is very loud, it's very clear, a uh, fantastic choice for a top speaker. I'm really proud of Eon. Their older Eon generation did have a lot more bass to it, but the tweeter was nowhere near as clear and as loud as this one. We don't like this. We took it off, as you could tell. Not, not really a fan of that. Um, but everything else about it is fantastic. It sounds really good. You guys have heard it. It's very impressive, 108 dBs within a meter. And that's, that wasn't even fully cranked. I know I said I wanted to go fully cranked, but we realized that the master volume was only a three quarter. So I definitely believe that this is worth the money. It's $300, you really cannot go wrong. At least it was on sale when we got it. Typically, I think these are 450 each, but we got it for 299. Again, amazing sound quality for what it is, for how cheap it is, the amount of volume you get out of it, the amount of clarity, I mean, we had it nearly at 80% gain and we weren't even getting any kind of distortion or any kind of harshness to it. Now, don't get me wrong, this thing was so loud, my ears actually still hurt a little bit. It's great. I highly recommend buying this guy. Um, definitely not like anything else we reviewed. If anything, it's very close to the QSC K10 that we reviewed. This is a 12, so 
a bit different, but in terms of DSP and raw power. So yeah, this has been Two Dudes Audio. Thank you again. We'll see you in the short next future. Don't get that close, thank you. <laughs>